on this episode, we got legend Travis Mash in the building. I know you're excited, Danny. Yeah, we heard some of the most epic stories of all time and a lot of science-based training stuff. Really cool. Cool. This episode is going to make you want to drink your own blood. Just stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Trayvon? Yeah, this episode was a straight banger. Uh, it's like the velocity training, all that is just super intriguing. And if you're into like weightlifting, sports, powerlifting, uh, you'll take something away from this. If you fuck with us at all, you will learn a bunch about this episode and – Travis gave me one of the maybe the big, biggest confidence I've ever had about training uh, and coaching, which I'm really proud of. This show is awesome. Let's roll to it right now. All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special guest, Mash Mafia, Travis Mash. What's good, brother? It's good to be back here. So hey. Exciting. You know what? First off, walked in looking sexy today, Travis. I see you work. You're in shape, bro. You're feeling good. I want to show props. I haven't seen him in a while. Come in looking in good shape. You know, he's been traveling around the world. Yep. I want you to give us a little background for the people that don't know you, Travis, because you wear a lot of hats and have over your career, which is why me and you, I think, get along so well together. Right. So please take it away. Just give us a little background on yourself. Um, I mean, you know, there's two worlds I've lived in. I, I grew up as the powerlifter you know I won two world championships a bunch of um, world records in powerlifting but I I had been to Colorado Springs when I was younger to do weightlifting and just my father got sick died pulled me away so powerlifting was just at the time easier there wasn't all these gyms on every corner back then so um, but I, I missed I really do my true love, first love, is weightlifting, even though... So, Olympic lifting. For a lot of right. people don't Olympic, know. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, like, yeah. in your yeah. world, everyone calls it weightlifting. In the Olympic. More, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, oh. I just want to clarify that. I know. You know like <laughs> some some <laughs> weightlifting coaches are really like, it's weightlifting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get I mean, it. I get I it. Care. I'm just clearing that up for yeah. the people who don't know. <laughs> totally understood. But so, yeah. Olympic lifting was your first love. Yeah, it really was. Which was Louis yeah. Simmons' first love, too. It really was. <laughs> yeah. That's why we became, you know, good friends. Yeah, yeah. We talked the whole time about what you know, you know, some ideas that we had for the weight, Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I feel like that's why we got along so well. Hell yeah. So, but then switch back, uh, muscle driver USA was a thing. It was a really good equipment company. You know, at the time it was like second to rogue. It okay. Was, it was big. And so they started a professional weightlifting team. Of oh, which that's cool. I With was like Glenn, the, right? Glenn. Yeah. And Don, and then I was the third, you know, okay. um, and that was great. So, so you're getting paid to be a weightlifter. <laughs> to be a weightlifting coach was like a dream. Yeah. So, yeah. And they, <laughs> they paid as well. And so, um, but then muscle drivers started falling. And so I, wa I wanted to keep doing it. And I wanted to keep, um, at the time, we stipend the athletes. Mm -hmm. So then I, I wanted to do it. So I found, you know, the online world and started making some good income. So I was able to stipend. There was like five different athletes I was paying. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pretend I was paying them a lot, but 600 bucks a month. Still, yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, which, you know, at the time was unheard of. The coaches would get mad. They're like, <laughs> you know, because they're trying to get people to pay them. You know, yeah. to, you know here I am giving paying them. that, yeah. There was two of us, you know, um, Dave from Cal Strength. Mm -hmm. he, does, he still does the same thing. And so, anyway, so I went through that, and then I got to the time, um, an era of wanting to go back to school, and which is what I've, in right now i just came out of the master side of things so now i'm you know on to the phd but so luckily a bunch of my athletes were of the age the university age so i talked to lenore ryan university and they um agreed to start a weightlifting program there so i've been so there you could get a scholarship yeah. to do olympic yeah. lifting yeah. So which sick. is fucking dope yeah it's cool and like they treat us just like football you know we you know the athletic trainers are downstairs with you know so they can go down there and do cold Hell heat, yeah. um, get any type of like the manipulation stuff that they they do they're all different it's really cool because each athletic trainer you know there's a bunch of really good ones and so some people are good at like you know using their hands some people are good at scraping anyway mm -hmm. so it's a good situation and then the first two years i've been there we've won the national championship which is crazy because i'm a brand new program yeah <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, yeah but you was so bringing epic. some dogs with yeah. you though I, don't I don't stacked. trip travis yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're recruiting yeah your recruiting was yeah. stacked <laughs> so so we had that come in and you know it's grown and so that's been where i'm at the last you know since 2020 is when i started going back to school so i've been in uh, school growing this thing at Lenore Run university continuing to do what i do online but lately the shift has been to education which is mm -hmm. my favorite so like if you know like jim away i work with them they're a velocity based training company and so they literally pay me to teach people you know to be hell yeah about velocity about strength conditioning so it's, it's 
it's great. Well, what I love about you, Travis, and that's why I've always come back to, you know, consuming your content and the respect is that you've lived multiple lives as an actual lifter at an extremely high level. And now you're backing it up with the academics and with the practical app. Like right. it's, it's, it's pretty unique in my opinion. And that's where like, it's hard to, somebody might not agree with what you're saying with this sure. or that. But it's hard for them to really like be a super hater when you're a fucking G like this too. It's super hard. For it's them. very hard. So yeah. that's why as I'm getting older, I'm able to b make even bigger numbers and kind of separate myself a little bit. And I've just been in it for so long. I'm finally starting to get a little bit more respect as a lifter. And that was the thing I was, I've always got respect for business, right? right? But I wanted to try to, and that's why I've stayed in it this long and continue to compete. It's like you were able to have a lot of success as a little bit of a younger lifter and then now you're backing it up and you know it wasn't that long ago where i saw you still pull 700 pounds and you're still right. getting under the bar for you know squatting all the time so it's like those things are a little bit lost with some of the, some of these coaches nowadays right. and the fact that you can check your athlete and if you want to pick up 600 cold i know you can fucking do it right now i can still do it yeah. <laughs> like look do you see how common yeah i can do that <laughs> Fuck yeah. i got that. <laughs> that that was the goal i wanted to you know because you know um when you t talk about the online world it you know it's somewhat saturated now there's yeah. still plenty of you know um, plenty of people for everyone but i wanted to separate myself because you've always got the people like there's ed Cohen. Who's, you know, is the guy. I love that yeah. guy. And, you know, he's the great athlete. So people listen to him. And then you have people like um, a Greg Knuckles, who's mm -hmm. super smart, you know. And so, so people listen to him. And then you have people who are good coaches. And so then people listen to them. But, like, you know, I was like, I want to bridge the gap. Of yeah. Research of the guy who's been the athlete and the, and the coach. So the final thing was go back to school and learn. Yeah, props to that. What I also liked is that you know, obviously, you've been around forever. But then – we're humble enough to say, well, shit, I, I like what Corey's doing. Absolutely. I, I'm going to check yeah. out this squat every day stuff. Not an Olympic lifter, not a world record holder, but he understood that the programming was good yes. and that potentially could be great, especially now adding your version of it, right? And seeing the bands and like the way we were applying things. So he didn't let these other things that normally let, I think, great other coaches limit them. He said, no. all right. I see what this guy's doing. Let me check it out. Yeah. And that right there told me like, oh, this dude's humble because his fucking, his list of shit he's accomplished way fucking deeper than mine. Well, <laughs> but he's saying like, oh, you're onto something here, Corey. Obviously, your guys are getting stronger. Something's happening. Right. <laughs> you're just, you're probably, not because you're my friend, but I, honestly, I think you're the most instinctive coach probably that I've ever known. It's wow, like, thank you. You just have this instinct. Of Can we works. clip that for Instagram? No. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. You know, I mean, like, My camera roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but guys like, um, talk someone, a coach like, um, like Spencer Arnold, my buddy, mm. you know, he's very smart. And so he's like, uh, he's always looking at stats, which is great. So do sure. I, but like, um, he's got all this, you know, that he's read and like, he applies it to his lifting. And most of the time, a lot of people who don't want to do that, who just, want to go instinctive that they are not very good at it. You mm -hmm. know, they don't have anything to base off what they're saying, but I think because you've lived it yeah. and watched your own body change, it, you understand. For so long too, Travis. Yeah. In your own group, you got more data than anybody because you've trained hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. and you see what works. And so, yep. yeah, you're definitely, if I think of someone that I, I just consider an instinctive coach, you're definitely going to be the go-to. Yeah. Like, thank you. I don't think I've ever, ever trusted anyone, you know, like, you. Um, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Like, yeah. that's why when you was like, yeah, I'm going to just do the program. I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> I was like, wait, am, are you sure? <laughs> no. I wanted to do the squat every day because, yeah. you know, I understood how frequency can make you, you know, better at a movement. And, you know, I, was, I just couldn't think, you know, when I was a power lifter, I didn't, I was two to three times a week. And so uh, I wanted to try it and see, and it was well, and coming from Olympic Great. weightlifting, Bulgarian methodology was huge, obviously. So that's right. an Olympic lifting thing. Right. And so what you saw was, wait, but these guys aren't Olympic lifters. Right. And they're doing it for powerlifting. And what we noticed was when our front squats, which once again, to like, to tell a group of powerlifters, oh, we got to have the mobility for a front squat, but we're not even doing cleans. Right. Right. So that, that was, a, so there was a lot of, but I knew that it would transfer over to CrossFitters two Olympic lifters, potentially two yeah. power lifters. And then when we saw our front squats go up, so did our back squats, so did our deadlift, so did our positioning. Guys were staying, and that's the other thing about Olympic lifters, they're light and really fucking strong. Some of them are super big, obviously, but most of the dudes like Pyro and some of these dudes, are, yeah. they're not very big guys. Yeah. And the weights they were handling, 
but they front squatted way more than they back squatted. Yeah. And so uh, it was like that understanding. And then when I went to Louis and I watched the dynamic method and them doing on Fridays, but then I was like, not many, very many people have a monolift and like, it's hard to like scale this. The guys are all wearing briefs. And yeah. then I was like, there's gotta be a way, um, that my guys were missing at the top. Their speed was good. I'm like, what if we start maxing out against these things? <laughs> what the fuck will happen? Yeah. And I swear to you, after one band wave, we saw, and this is when we were doing one band, two band, right? Cole, yeah, like we, we weren't even, we, thought that was we like weren't heavy. even using that yeah. much tension. Yeah. We're talking, we're waving from a hundred to 200, maybe to 300. Now that motherfucker starts at 220 and it's yeah. going way, way past 400, but we saw everything just go. I still can't believe that bands are such a well-kept secret still. Still. It's like, even if you look at the, the science to them, that's, you know, when you do um, just a barbell and straight weight, all you have is gravity. Yep. You have 9.81 meters per second squared pulling and that's it. And so, but when you add the bands, it's not, it has nothing to do with gravity. It's literally <laughs> attached to something and pulling you to it. So you're going to increase speed. Mm. Now when you look it's at- It's forcing more speed. Yeah. It's forcing more speed. No way you can do the same load um, not going faster because it's pulling you. It's acting as a different force. And so when you increase the speed, everything we're finding out about hypertrophy now, like the eccentrics is probably the thing that most people are missing. And not just like- I can't overall. wait to tell you about this. It's Keep the going. the speed of the eccentric. <laughs> so the faster you can go down, the, neuromus the neuromuscular adaptations go way up when you talk about stretch reflex. Yeah, yeah, of course. Simply. And not to mention that, but even the, when you talk about the muscles in general, not the tendons and all the connective, but you talk about the, the um, there's a there's a protein filling called Titan. It's really important to elasticity and it's directly correlated to the speed of the eccentric. So like, it only makes sense to, to do bands. But I, I hope the people who I compete against still don't because yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big advantage. So, well, and you know. what we saw too, Trav, was um, the last phase because we just did where we did a combo event. There was four of us. There was like 15 of us did the meet, which was fucking sick. Right. But, you know, I was looking around and I was like, all right, you know, I, I like to fucking challenge that. Yeah. We did the bodybuilding show uh, on a Saturday, power up the meet on Sunday. Right. And so Larry Pacifico is the one who held the meet, which you're familiar with him, obviously. <laughs> He's a yeah. fucking stud. Yes. So we basically drove down to Dayton and weighed in on Saturday morning for the 24-hour weigh-in. As right. soon as we got off the scale, we drove to Akron and did the bodybuilding show the same day. All of you did this? No, there oh. was there was four of us, right. and then but but most everyone did the meet, right? And that of the crew, so four of us competed, got off stage, started bloating, drove back home, slept in Columbus, woke up, went back to Dayton in the morning, and did the powerlifting meet. And um, on that band wave, not only did our tension go up, but we added eccentrics for every front squat on counts. Sweet. So basically, like on Monday, it was a three count down, then a three count pause, and then get out against the bands, oh, man. and then a five count. So we noticed that the eccentric loading, like slowing the right. tension, like made it. Yes, yeah, and yeah. so and I, I wasn't aware of like that he was doing that. Obviously, I saw a lot of people do different things, but when we started changing that, it was like, and then we started doing all pause work on our back squat days. Right. I came in here. Um, it was like. Probably like six weeks out, I did a camber bar at full suited 700 for a three count pause. No wow. bands, just straight weight. And I knew like, You're oh yeah, something day. fucking working here. Let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you do any throughout the week of just like a regular down and up? Or was so we only pause? do that um, a lot of times on Friday. So when you come One in day. tomorrow, that's when it's like we kind of like a freestyle front, freestyle oh, yeah. front squat. Some guys will do 10 count pauses. Some guys will go just down and up. They gangster it out. They'll knee wrap on a day like that sometimes and that's go for awesome. it. Because we've had six guys front squat 455, uh, over 20 front squat 405, all power lifters. And so, and that's all with the mixed grip too, or with the, uh, with the, you know, Olympic grip. Right. And so that's one of those things where I just kept seeing like these dudes are excelling so much in this lift because yeah. of the bands. But the eccentric was a, a thing we added, which we all felt, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, I think for sure. You know, I, I went the last time, right before, right when I first started going back to school, I did, your, you know, the bands yep. that you told me about. And it was, a, it was a crazy improvement. And I'm yeah. old, you know, I'm, I was in my you know, mid-40s, and now I'm closer to 50. And uh, it was interesting because I, I got back to well over 500 pounds on the front squat. <laughs> Liggity split. It was crazy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen videos of a front squad 500. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was a very fast process. You know? Yeah. I came back and like uh, I could do almost 400 day one, but then 
within just a few weeks. I have to go back because I don't want to exaggerate. It was like yeah. five or six weeks. I'm but you got back quick. Yeah. <laughs> Real fast. The thing that I've noticed with um, athletes, we had a couple pitching guys recently go through band waves in their off season. Now the pro guys is only like two months off season. Sure. But what they were explaining is that they didn't really know how to properly brace. So now, you know, a guy that throws 96, 97, he's walking back a front squat against bands, probably wearing a belt or not wearing right. a belt, but learning how to brace his core. And then he goes, why am I not doing that off the mound? Yeah. Why am I not feeling that same internal pressure when I'm pushing? So it's like, I've seen that happening. Um, the high school kids are making crazy weights right now. And that it's, and that's transferred over well that sure. I got And So it's been interesting to see it starting to creep. Like we had um, the pirates trip away guy. I was down there hanging out with him the other day. Like Sweet. there there's, it's interesting cause it's starting to creep even a little bit more. And so your velocity stuff, I think will obviously help this even more so. Cause then people can say, when I do the dynamic stuff, it has to be at these, you know, so yeah. you talk about what gym aware is doing or what you're kind of well, working with, with them with, um, with velocity it keeps, we ne you know, we're never going to mix because I will say work up to one RM and I'll give them a velocity. So like, um, normal. so part of the one RM is they have to meet a velocity. They too. have to meet it. Yeah. I got it. So okay. one RM at like 0.5 meters per second, mm -hmm. which is kind of heavy, but you know, not too bad. It might be yep. getting close to 9%. And got so, it. We never, um, with my top dude, Ryan Grimsley. Like, yeah, it's a good we, stud. Yeah, he's incredible. But we, you know, we never, we very rarely go below 0.4, even though you can go, like, I can go to 0.18. If you're really good, yeah. someone like you who's lifted forever, you could grind to yeah. a 0.18 you know, sure. or, or lower. But I never get them there because, um, because here's the thing, is that in weightlifting, I want them to be strong, but I don't necessarily need to, like, show that. Yeah, I need to know that he could, without actually putting him under the risk of doing it. So mm. like, so since we've been doing that, he's been on an absolute monster tear. tear. And so because we, he never gets overly fatigued from squatting, or never gets close to being even hurt or yeah. beat up because he's never going to make managing it by that managing it by that. That's interesting. And I can literally watch. So like for example, uh, let me make this simple. Let's say that we test ninety percent, and he does it at you know we'll say point three eight whatever. Mm. And it's so, ultra fast. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then six weeks later, we don't necessarily try to beat it. We go 90% again. And so, oh, now he's at 0.42. Mm. So I know, I know 100% at that point he can do X. I got a question based around this. So for Olympic lifting specifically, a guy like Ryan doesn't, Ryan, right? Yeah. yeah. Ryan doesn't have a meet, let's say for a couple, for a couple months or whatever. This is what is, we're in right now. Okay. Yeah. I think this is just my own from what I'm seeing here. There is value in pushing in like to yes. that because when that bar slams on those guys, Travis, and you're better right. than me because you're more elite, they get stuck in that three quarter spot a lot, a lot. Right. Yeah. And that's where the band tension, especially as they rotate through, right. like right now we're doing bl double monster. So it's like 120, 240, 360. That's the wave, right? right. So that 360 jumps on you, bro. That's like a gorilla. No, I'm totally. So agree. now getting him to a one rep true grinder, but bands. not multiple times a year. <laughs> right. But that would be interesting because then I think when he's on the platform and he does take that one right. that's hanging it out to dry, he's gonna he have that. Grind it. Well, there you go. If you watch his lifting, he's so crazy. He's he's almost capable of anything. He's right? crispy, man. Yeah, he's a uh, 73 kilo, so he's 160 pounds. Yeah. And he cleans one F. Uh, 14 just did it. <laughs> right. yeah he's, like, he's not, <laughs> yeah he's a freak he's not normal Damn. but right now we're in what's called accumulation so you would see exactly what you're talking yeah, about yeah. like i'll show you a video i'm about to post of us going with band monster band yeah not, yeah. not the minis you're choking stuff in there, right? yeah, yeah. With the blue bands okay and the, it was incredible it was like over 528 pounds and like he doubled it hmm. and so but i do the cool thing is is i do like i don't have to take him to uh a miss yeah. i can take him to point three. Mm. Point three is the grind it's yeah. just like okay. it's the grind before the you know it's like yeah, a yeah. before the one five. that's yeah. questionable yeah. 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 and then hang your spine out yeah. 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 yeah because he's the top dude now so like you know at this point we're at a point where i'm cruising into the olympics oh yeah and so like it's you got a risk reward you know like um if i get him five pounds stronger in the squat yeah. is it worth the risk of getting you know what i mean yeah you forgot to mention you're the olympic coach yeah, <laughs> but you know, yeah. so like no big deal. With that, dude, what we do? This is crazy. 
Like if you were to come to the world championships, you would see him like three days out, do what you think's a PR. I mean, he'll go to a PR, but it's a PR at 0.4 meters per second. So like every <laughs> single, like you, you just go into my, you know, the match elite Instagram yeah. and you'll see every single meet PR a few days later, destroy next time PR. Mm. Just but at point four, yeah, and I already know I, I know the answer. You've never it. managed anybody like this before, either, never. right? No, I you know, last quad taught me a lot, yeah, about who I am and about like how I want to treat athletes. And so, no, I've never ever taken that's exciting so much into a human, yeah, than this boy, yeah, that's cool. And his teammates, not no, I love his, he's got a bunch of teammates around him, they're just not in it this quad, there's yeah, they're in the next way, but yeah, yes, sick, yes, Danny. Um, the one thing I keep thinking about too, and then just from doing your squat every day with the Olympic lifting mixed in. Yeah, he is, did your full program. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I went from like, I d actually did the 12 week wave twice in a did row really? just because I was like, man, this, I'm onto something. One that, well, the one thing that really stood out to me was when you, you'd back, go back to back on a uh, Monday, Tuesday with front squat yeah. with a belt and without a belt. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I mean, I, his ideas. Yeah. I mean, I knew how to use, <laughs> use a belt, but like that really like helped me not have to rely on the belt. Yeah. Programming the time. a belt, yeah. no belt is like something people were missing for a long time. Too. Limits yeah. the load. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like you, you know, let's say I don't want them to go heavy. But when we take the belt off, then they won't, you know, yeah. Like yeah. we all know we're going to cut it short. If yeah. We don't have a belt on. So it just, it helps me do, do that without having to say that it's like yeah. another way yeah. of like conjugate too like even yeah. i would program flat soles over olympic shoes too and that Bru my leverage yeah. is brutally different from that like all those little changes i think people didn't realize how that could continue to make the body to get better long term i might go yeah. barefoot that's a great no I, yeah, yeah it changes everything right yeah so well and then another thing too like just on the spectrum of like you know, as you were go coming up as an elite lifter, like, were you, like, super married to, like, the percentage game? Or were you more going off of, like, instincts? Or were you kind of like a like a blend or blend. mesh of the two? Yeah. You know, like, because with Westside, I learned a lot about the conjugate. And so I wanted to apply some of that. But I knew mm -hmm. everything can't. Because you do need to practice. You know, you eventually you got to be really good mm -hmm. at snatch and clean and jerk. And it's like, it's like um, baseball. Like, a pitcher does not get better. Until they start pitching the ball, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got it. You got it. It's a rhythm, you know. It's a rhythm and timing more so than like um, squatting or deadlifting. So. Yeah, because I'm like just thinking about like with like a snatch or a clean and jerk. It's like sometimes they seem like they never align at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> like one is like feeling awesome, and the other one feels like it's your first fucking day, and you're like, <laughs> like what's going on? Like I could barely even hit you know eighty or eighty five percent. So. Right. Um, because obviously every day is not, you know, as Christmas. you say, Christmas for, yeah. for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, like, how do you kind of approach, like, maybe a day that, you know, Ryan walks in, he's not feeling, you know, 100%. Great question. Yeah. So, we use velocity to monitor fatigue. You can so see it. the first movement of the day, whatever it is, uh, at 85% of that, they do a pull. So, it's if they're snatching, mm -hmm. and when they get up to, in their warm-ups to 85%, they do a pull. And I've got the data that tells me where they're at in fatigue. You know, so, like... If they're ten percent slower than normal, I'm gonna shut them down yep. know, at the at the very moment. And we're gonna do like some light bodybuilding, and then we're gonna take it to the house. You know, um, if they're like five percent, it's normal. It's, I I beat you up for a reason. There's a very yeah. Ten percent is dangerous. You know, yeah. it's like I'm risking injury and something else is going on. So what they also do is fill out a subjective questionnaire. So they'll come in. It's like a two minute. Um, there's like three or four questions, like uh, how many hours of sleep. Well, you know, on a scale from one to five, five being terrible, how much stress are you experiencing outside of the gym mm -hmm. that I'm not giving to you? And so, like, when I see the velocity is low and I go back and see the subjective questionnaire, that's high. It opens up a, a conversation of, like, what's happening? Yeah. You know, what is going on? How can I help you? Is it relationships? That's cool, Travis. I that is a yeah. more comprehensive approach. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Very so good. It's got to be, man. You know, it's a, it's a different era. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not letting – you know, let me say this. Like, I think there's too many coaches in the world that they're so worried about proving to the world that they're the greatest coach that they don't do what it takes to actually be that. You mm -hmm. know, like, I'm more worried that you know something I don't than me proving to the world that I'm smarter <laughs> than you. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what scares me. That's I, crazy. It keeps me up yeah. at night thinking there's somebody out there that knows something I don't. I, I don't give a shit if what you think about me. I just want to know what I know. And mm -hmm. so fuck with that. Yeah. That's real good. Cool. Yeah. So I kind of go back to back squatting. Sure. So I'm a huge fan of the close stance. 
the close stance and on back squat. I've been having to squat a uh, high bar because of shoulder placement. And I know you basically squat the similar way. So, like, is that something that you've already, already like, naturally done the enti- your entire career? Or were you eventually, like, a wide squatter? And then I was never wide. Never you know, wide. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the one. You know, mostly everyone knows I, I love Louis Simmons and agree with a lot he says. But one of the things about everyone maximizing hips is, like, once you know anatomy, you know that can't be right. You know, you think about, you know, the anthropometrics of each person. Do they have long femurs, short femurs? Then you look at the Everybody's actual, built so different, yeah. The hip is like, I mean, if you think all the different variations of that, you know, the angle of the neck of the femur, or you t- talk about the, you know, how the your acetabellum is formed. There's so many variations. I mean, I can't imagine there'd be like hundreds of mm. different variations each person could be. And then there's um, some people have deep hip, hip sockets, like most people where I'm from. Like in the, my people are gonna Appalachia. come from. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And we come you know, originally from like the Scottish, the Irish Highlands, which, which genetically have very deep hip sockets, meaning I'm gonna be really strong and produce a lot of power but my mobility is going to be iffy. Always. Drug a lot of trees out of the... <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. And so if I squat super wide, like, it's not that I, do, I can't get down. It's, it's like my, there's bone on bone, it won't work. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. like, you know, so I, I was more of a shoulder width at the most, at the height That's of my power. That's pretty much where Cole's at too, yeah. Yeah, and so now I'm more, I'm closer because I'm old and I have arthritic. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that's yeah. all I can do. So, but, you know, so no, there cannot be... One. It's really like, where's your power at? Where's your you, power? And yeah. I remember reading about, like, um, I think it was even like the Russians, like when they would pick like the athletes when they're like eight or ten years yeah. old, they would see like who jumps, runs fast, and then where where's the natural feet spot at? Like, right. and that's yeah. where they're gonna start the squatting position at, probably. Yeah. Right. Like, where would you jump on that box at? You know what I mean? Now you're never gonna jump like right. this. <laughs> For some reason, that shit always felt really natural to me, yeah. and that and that's why I've been able to. Why? Sure. Yeah, it, but it's yeah. like most people are like. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that, but for some reason, my geometry just always matched sure, up. Totally, and it just is. You what have it long is. legs. Yeah, if and you then, squatted close, it would be in a predicament. You know. Yeah, it puts me. It, I just never felt as strong. So right. that when I would when I would program Olympic lifting shoes, it, weightlifting shoes, it would be so much more difficult for me. Yeah. It was like a 50 pound at least difference. So I knew when I went back to my chucks and I lo- and I you know rode the bar lower, it was a fucking wrap. So sure. if I was making 500, 520, whatever raw in, in my oldies, man, I was fucking, for meat day, I was ready to rock. So yeah. that was like one of the ways I did variation too. I so. would have for sure gone wide if, you know, if I thought it was going to help. Especially with how tall you are, dude, you could have got to parallel quick. Yeah. yeah. You know? And like my biggest competitor, Vocal Pool, who's from here, like he was super wide. Yeah. But I beat him. So like. I brought that up in the group chat. I was like, I'm pretty sure Travis beat Chuck head to head at least once. Multiple times. Yeah. He only beat me. (laughs) I mean, just, I mean, you could just go and throw a story out there, Travis, if you want. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He only beat me once because I bombed out. That's all. Mm -hmm. The only once. My very first, well, powerlifting meet back, I I tied him. My very first one. What was the total? Oh, it was, uh, it was the very first WPO. It was like, it wasn't like 25th, 2050. Yeah. And like he, we tied. But he um he weighed in lighter. Got it. Was, it. It was it's more than that. Like you two twenty gotcha. then uh, two forty yeah, two two twenty. Yep. So but then from then on like and I won big time. You know what was your game? Was your game always deadlift? Like or I know obviously you were good at all three, but like what was like your like go to? Like you Honestly, knew I would say because I'm all three. Like, yeah. I, I didn't really have like so like he would squat maybe twenty pounds more. Got it. But then I would thrash him on bench press, and then we were <laughs> then we were equal <laughs> right on, there on deadlift. Yeah, yeah. we're saying. Uh, so you were really you were really solid on all three lifts. You didn't yeah. have one that was like overbearing. No, like no, I was approaching world records on all three. And Fuck then, yeah! Which in powerlifting you have to have, and that yeah, was yeah. His, that was his. You know, okay. So let me um, with Vogelpool. You know, he broke his neck when he was younger, and that was his that was his uh, demise right there because he couldn't bench. You know, yeah. It, the nerves were all messed up. The demo Matt Demo, I guess, like slammed him on his head and so broke his neck and. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how do you being able to bench? You know, I would imagine it would have been closer. Yeah, his intensity was pretty fucking. Yeah, I, I'm a, I was a Chuck fan, even though I was yeah, beating him. he's just cool, you know. But yeah, yeah. He Were you like get, did you much. get riled up like that or no? No, he's just no, pretty mild kept it inside. Yeah. yeah, yes. I think um, most great athletes would do that. Like yeah, yeah, Cone, yeah. You know, like you keep it in because when you get crazy, say you're getting crazy on squats. Yeah. By the time deadlift comes, you know, you're, yeah. you're tired. And so, That's like, true. 
you save it, you know, you keep inner aggression, controlled aggression. So the monolith know. that we got out here, Travis, um, I think was from like the first WPO. I'm almost positive. So like it looks I bought, familiar. Yeah. yeah. So I bought it. Uh, it was in the side room at Louis, mm. and he, uh, I told him I was looking for one. This is like yeah, 2007 or eight or something like that. And he's like, "Well, I needed one that's wider. Like the guys can't get their feet out wide enough." God. So he sold it to me for like <laughs> 1,500 bucks. Oh man. I bring it in and I'm like, love it month later he's like well i don't really like that one i bought i think i'd like to get that one back and then i'll just widen it out i was like oh, sorry i felt bad tell him no, no, no you're breaking out you're breaking yeah out. yeah so yeah i was like wait yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so so we have a pretty historic i've seen it that white monolith in a lot of videos and i'm just like is that our monolith? I, I i'm pretty sure it is <laughs> Uh, that's got epic. Chuck going 900 and like some of these ones like on their way yeah. up. It's, it's pretty sick. I, if it was in West side, I'm, I'm guaranteed. I'm sure it was. That was it. <laughs> so, so it's, wow, it's, that's it's impressive. pretty sick. So you'll have to give it a look when you, when you roll out. There. I saw it. I, I already, I did the first thing I saw in your gym. Yeah. I was like, Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walk in and see monolith reverse hyper. All oh, these yeah. guys know what's going yeah. on. <laughs> your gym is just my style. Listen, yeah. the only thing about being a university is like, it's, too pretty you know yeah like, but they've given me the green light to like bring my own brand yeah i'm like okay I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yes because i told them you know i was like it was at the end of the year i was like uh they're like you seem disgruntled i'm like this room is too pretty i was like this can't be me and then yeah. they're like make it you what's right. your what's your first move gonna be to uh there's m some mirrors i would just throw those away you know <laughs> I'll put one if people want to go in the bathroom and flex up but like you know, I don't like this. And they've got so like good. pretty like logo things. I want to put like, you know, post like this is like, yeah. you get this. He's like, put posters of, of yeah. um, either like some hours. of the great lifters, man. Mm -hmm. Like that's always like, we don't have some of those back up in the gym, but we, we need to put them back up. But like you go in the Dumbo area and you get a biggest picture of fucking Arnold or pyro or like, right. that's what you need, bro. Right. You know, and our, um, our athletes love powerlifting. I mean, I'm their coach and like, <laughs> Like for I've been coach of two of them for over a decade each, and so mm -hmm. they love powerlifting. So I would like to put some like Vogelpool posters. Hell up, yeah! You know, cone posters. Maybe one of me. I don't know. Yeah. But, but, you know, <laughs> but it, that's what I want. I like it. Just I want someone to like think they're punching in to go to work. Hell yeah! Not to be like mm -hmm. I'm at a you know some. Well, and that's the one thing about gym. those type of facilities is that when somebody walks in this gym and it's a for the same way I, I when I felt West Side, I, I wanted to try to mimic that. Like, you're putting your best foot Me forward. Too. Right. And you don't want to be like, oh, well, I'm getting a fucking cappuccino. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, how many. <laughs> Bring that shit black. I, get it, get, yeah, yeah, iced, you know? Like, yeah. no ice. <laughs> no ice. No ice. <laughs> so, how many, like, uh, weightlifters do you have on the team and everything? 25. 25. Mm -hmm. And Ooh, then, how many times do you, like, I mean, it probably depends, but yeah. how many times are they competing a year, would you say? <sighs> depends on the person, but yeah. maybe four maybe on four. average. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Ryan, because he's a junior and he's killing it. Uh, juniors, there's, you know, tw uh, below 20 in weightlifting. And then, from 21 years old and up, you're you're a senior. Okay. And so uh, he can do both still this year. So he's competing a little bit more than most, but we only peak at two. Gotcha. So like, okay. um, yeah, we'll just train through it and just be like a, you know, we go heavy on Friday, so this will be our max effort day. And then, um, so yeah. It's like how we That's are. That's how we roll. Guys will be like, well, I'll just jump in that meet. I'm going to squat Saturday anyway. Same yeah, you want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's the one thing I always liked about what Louie would talk about with the conjugate method is that they could drop at any time and go compete. And, go compete. and that's how our guys are too. And I'm proud of that because like, I don't have to run. I mean, we'll run through a cer our version of Circumax uh, if we are getting ready for a big sanction meet right. or something. But the reality is that might only happen a couple times a year. A lot of the guys are just like, fuck, I'm strong every day. So that's let's what, ride. That's what we try. You know, <laughs> with sometimes like we're in this period right now where I've got till I've got six months before world championships. Mm. Like we might do things differently. Like we might do extra hypertrophy. You know, yeah. um, depending on who you are. Like with um, with Ryan, he, you know, he, he's huge. So do we need to get bigger? Probably not. So we're gonna work on imbalances. There you go. Um, but he's still at any moment he's gonna win. Like you can't beat him right now. So don't get any hopes up. But like <laughs> he just won't beat you as bad. There's the power <laughs> lifter. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> but he, I mean, you know, so we're prepping. This is a big one. Yeah. This uh, this world championships will be the first one that counts towards the Olympics. And this year, 
it all comes down to a total. You don't have to – last time it was points. Mm. So you had to compete six times. You had to count four of those. And, like, it was like – it was a points thing. This mm. time it's straight who Yeah, it most. should be, like, who's strong. Yeah. <laughs> like, who lifts the most? Like, you know, because – Nobody can get strong like that. Everyone's trying to go hard all the time. Yeah. And so the totals really petered out towards the end. Mm. So what you guys see at the Olympics is not as good as they could have been. Yeah. This yeah. time we're going to, you know, we're literally, I have a plan for the next two years. Things change. Yeah. It's just a skeleton. But, like, I have priorities set up already. And so, you know, the goal is to peak in 2024. Where's the Olympics Paris, at? Paris. 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 So. Paris. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. So, <clears throat> Trayvon. Um, I'm curious more about like the like the velocity like with the bar speed like with um like testing it with like look like athletes like track athletes or like football right. players and that kind of shit like that. Trey's Trey speed for a reason that we call him yeah. Trey speed. He's super fast That's and bar point. our bar speed's really fast too. <laughs> but but I mean, you know my pastime I love sprinting like and I love the whole world of strength and conditioning for sprinters. But with when you take bar speed like the thing that I would do if I were a coach coaching track athletes or football i would take them through a force velocity profile so you basically take a take a movement um front squat or and dead and maybe yeah. deadlift and so they start at like 40 percent. they go 40 percent for triple 45 for triple 50 and all the way up to where they are going to either you can pick a number to stop at like you could say 0.3 and you'd be stopping them short of a true but in that, you see spectrums of what you, we all know. We, now there's so much research. I know what you should be. Yeah. But when I find a flaw throughout that, then I attack that. So, like, you got um, Ryan Grimson. Like for some reason, between, like, uh, 50 and 60%, he was slower than normal. Hmm. So, literally, for an entire, like, 12 to 20-week block, we focused on the – not very heavy, right? Yeah. Going as fast as we could. And next thing you know, at the meet, he's, he's you know, like I said – Three days early, he sets this massive PR. It was the beginning of all this. Got it. And so, like, um, so you just in like and you focused <clears throat> on fifty to sixty percent. Fifty to sixty percent. That's interesting. Yes, you know. So we would do like a potentiation set. So like, they might work up to eighty-five percent for one, and but then the, all the volume is it. But you back down yeah. fifty to sixty. The majority of the time was fifty to sixty percent, but then his one RM jumped up because mm. you know like if there's a problem along the strength curve, then sometimes nothing keeps moving I, I remember reading uh something louis wrote about how some great olympic lifter was hitting a bunch of numbers and didn't realize his volume had fell down and yeah. then it wasn't really the conjugate or the one it was literally his actual total amount of volume sets and that might have been when they started like adding it all up and doing all that type of stuff that's but, what we do but that sounds about the same where ryan really needed more work in that 50 to 6 50 right. to 60 percent and then it pushed up that makes that makes a ton of and, sense and the data that i keep like i can see like how, how much of my time is spent focusing on snatch? Like you said earlier, it's hard to get snatch and clean and jerk. So, like, you know, through blocks, I will prioritize one and say that, you know, right now his clean and jerk is killing everyone. So now we're bringing his, you know, he's got a good chance of breaking a world record snatch. That's sick. So now we're bringing that. So you want to focus. So mm -hmm. some coaches say, oh, I need to focus on snatch. But, you know, are you? Like, how do you know? And so, like, I know <laughs> to the degree how much time is spent on snatch, how much is on clean and jerk. You know, uh, a lot of times you think, you know, that you think you're doing a certain thing. And one thing I've learned from, you know, collecting all the data is, like, we're wrong a lot. And mm -hmm. so, like, mm -hmm. I know. Like, I'm not guessing. I'm trying to go, I'm trying to, go to Paris and win. So, I'm not going to guess. You know, we, we can't haven't had Olympic to. gold in a yeah. while. No. No, we, um, Kate Vibert got a silver last year. And got so, it. that was, that opened up a lot of people's eyes. At the like, world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, we just competed at Junior Worlds. Ryan did. And it's the two competitors were literally the two dudes who'll be battling in the Olympics, and he got uh, he got bronze, but he hit the he hit the last clean and jerk to be golden clean and jerk and to be silver overall. But they and they said he bobbled his elbow. I mean, he a wobble. It yeah. was it yeah. was. But so he's we're there. We're, yeah. we're and the thing is is that we're not on drugs. Yeah. So we we you know right now a lot of the other countries are starting to taper back on drugs. Yep. Because their drug testing is going up. And so I'm watching their totals go down. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, ours is going up. So, you know. Mm. How, how's that feel, Travis? It feels good. Yeah. It feels good. I hate losing. So, you yeah. Know, if you want a coach that just, you know, I was talking about this last night with Mark Canella, who's Columbus weightlifting town. Mm -hmm. If the goal of USA weightlifting to become, you know, it, it becomes that they just want a nice little, like, 
Sunny Club or something. <laughs> I am not your guy. No. You, you know, uh, <laughs> immediately I'm out, and it's okay. Yeah. We'll part, you know, and I'll still be your friend. But yeah. I can't be a part. <laughs> I, I'm not losing. Like I do that, you know. Yeah. You know, my my stepfather taught me one thing a long time ago. He's like, if two people are in the room, it's okay if you're the one that wins. And for some reason, yeah. he said that things clicked, and I was like, I can still be their friend, but I'm going to beat them. And so, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I don't know what happened that day, but it flipped my whole world upside down. Well, head. I come in here every day to beat everybody. It sure. hasn't happened in a long time, but I mean, I still, I'm still walking yeah. in thinking, I'm not fucking losing to that guy. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to beat this guy. It's a little bit few and far between Madeline's nowadays, like, but that's how I feel, Travis. I feel humbled now. <laughs> my head is like, I don't even try to mess with that anymore. <laughs> like, I know I can beat him on deadlift, so once in a while I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. That's coming. This kid, Ryan, is just like, yeah. he's the next level athlete. But know? even like uh, what's been cool, even though I'm the only one wearing briefs and stuff in the group, it's some of the top guys. Like I said, we had Brian squatted 700, you know, Tyler Galbraith 600, Beast. Matheny. Like, these guys are all pushing 600 plus, and it's like, they don't care that I'm in briefs. They just want more people onto the bar at that level. So they're still trying to beat me. So there's sure. there's still that competition. So I still get the, you know, I'm still in it with Feel them. the battle. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, to me, it's it's kept me young and, and excited about the sport. And then being able to go, you know, challenge ourselves to go do that bodybuilding show. And then the next day, which you'll you'll appreciate this. I do. And, and it, Your trifectas are in. Yeah, the trifecta yeah. was awesome. <laughs> but go the next day after a bodybuilding show and then squat 694 at 81 you know, drug free as a master, but the world like, so it would be like all the AAPFs, all the drug tested yeah. powerlifting history, mm -hmm. 181, you know, 40 years, 40 to 44 is 694.46. That's the world record all That's time. What you're going after. Well, so Cole's my <laughs> knee guy, my rap guy, right? Amazing. We looked at the fucking sheet. The fucking sheet said it was right. Point five. Over. said it was 694.5. So I was like, you know what? And dude, I was a little tired from the day before. I was like, I'll just take it because it's only beating it by a, a smidge. It was it was point four on the internet, but I didn't know it was rounded up on the sheet. It was point four six. Uh, so so I took the same fucking weight. So you missed by point zero six. And I weighed one pound less. Oh, it's a. It's so I basically yeah. am number two <laughs> all time. So you gotta go back and get that. Yeah. 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 So it was a little frustrating because I trained that whole time. To, because I was number I think eight or something like that at the, when I went into it, and I was like, I can have the number one yeah. squat, multiply, blah blah blah, whatever. And fucking, I thought I took it. I'm all pumped. I make it. <laughs> I'd be so mad. It comes out yeah. on open powerlifting, like, and I'm like, fuck, six ninety four point four six. Are you fucking kidding me? No. I would have. I just would have took another. Oh, you know, a fucking know. half pound. You could have sprinkled some chocolate. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So. But I was super, uh, I was super proud of not only being able to to make that, but also to do it after the show. Obviously, how do you which do is that? crazy. Like, how does that work? So, like, what did you weigh in at the bodybuilding? So, well, so it's the opposite. I had to weigh eighty one for the powerlifting meet. Okay. So then I just luckily I look lean around one eighty, which is right. good because I would normally if I was doing a bodybuilding show just by itself, I would probably go to like one seventy four, one seventy. I'd be in that weight class, it's right? Just, yeah. But I I knew I needed to weigh. 81 right on the nose so I could blow it up for the powerlifting the next day. I see. So basically, yeah. as soon as I'm walking off stage, I'm starting to bloat. I got to the meet. I weigh 96. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's impressive. Uh, yeah. I think I went to bed at 198, woke up at 196. All of my gear fit unbelievable. How did you, what did you do to gain the weight? Oh, it's, it's the most fun of all time. It's like <laughs> immediately. Uh, so they, they, these guys were riding with me. I had uh, already had Bob Evans like in the car, so it was like Absolutely. I was smashing pancakes, uh, salting yeah. everything, so and then it was move. Arby's, and then it was pizza and chicken pizza, chicken noodle soup superset, amazing. <laughs> wow. It's like you're eating a piece of pizza and you're drinking chicken noodle soup broth. So <laughs> I it bet was. You can see him. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, when my eyes look fucking terrible, like yeah. you look like yeah, like Can't a fucking a train wreck. Can't see your wiener, yeah. and then it's like, but. <laughs> You go in the back room, and, and then mind you, I hadn't touched a bar without fucking 360 pounds of bands on it for month, like a month. Right. And so I get up under, I think I took 500 in the back room, like, you know, straps down, whatever, and it literally felt like the bar is fucking empty. 
So I opened up awesome. at, um, I think I opened up at 600. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I went yeah. 600, 650, 694.46. So you guys don't do any like like straight weights now? It's all bands or what? Just, uh, after the cycle of like three weeks of bands, so we'll go. So like this cycle right now, we're the, on our first week is 120 pounds this week. It'll be 240 next week, 360, and then we'll do uh, a week without bands. Okay. Yeah, So, but we'll usually test against a camber bar, a bow bar, or the safety not, bar. Not, true, like, not, not yeah. using, unless they're getting ready for a meet, which some of the guys are competing September 17th at a local meet. So we'll kind of like change the cycle to let them, the, so their day when they take it without bands will be that weekend. So that's awesome. like our circumax, basically. Yeah, I like that. Or mini. You know, but that's I the wouldn't bit. do any, you know, like just straight weight, would they? I yeah, no, know. They, but it was always box. It was just, yeah. it, so we ran a true West Side cycle like that a long time ago. And I think because none of the guys wear briefs and then no one really bought, like we went to the meet and looked like no one knew how to squat. Yeah. Literally like we didn't, we only box squat the whole time. I was like, I'm not fucking doing this no more. I, I, agree <laughs> with you. I think that's another one of their weaknesses. Yeah. None of them looked comfortable squatting. No. Like, you know, like if you watch a weightlifter, they look, and I was used to that. I'm like, you guys just look like if you get this perfect little groove, yep. you'll squat a lot. Something you might not squat anything. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you might miss a lot. That so. was the one thing that drew me to wanting to front squat program more. One, I didn't think as a drug-free athlete I could probably recover from back squatting Agreed. super fucking Agreed. heavy every day, right? Agreed. But with the programming of three of this and three count here and a pause and a band, I could program enough to be able to recover because I'd be at four total reps on my front squat and I'd be done. And then right. I'd be moving on to everything else. And I just realized that like, man, I need to get comfortable in that hole yeah. with that bar and that like in, in, and be able to move like that. Because if I can sit, I remember I sat in the hole with a 10 count with 315 on a front squat. And I just remember thinking, and I, when I came out yeah. of there, it, I just felt like a different guy. I, I don't know you. how, yeah, it like yeah. makes you feel like a little bit meaner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you're, not, you're not worried about, I hope I stick this groove. No. Like you just get really good at squat. Well, you yeah, you that? become an expert yeah. because you're under it all the time. Like right. I squatted every day for like three years straight. Like I learned so much about myself. I, I was a fucking maniac. I'd go in the morning and miss a weight in my basement half pass out, come back in the evening, be like, fuck it, I know I just missed something on that. And I'd make it. Yeah. I was just practicing the movement right. without being scared. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think if you look at Ed Cohen and watch him, he looks so, like watching him move, he just looks so technical. Oh, and man. so good at what he was doing. I think the thing Chuck was missing is he never looked like a master of the movement. He looked like, you know, a mean knew, motherfucker yeah, that if you hit it, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. But he probably won't hit it, you know? Yeah. So if you look at like, uh, there's a Yuri Belkin, this guy from, oh, yeah. Oh, dude, from Russia. Like, I love, because he is. So what, Deadlift's like nine something, right? Yes. Yeah. He's getting close to his thousand marker so at 100 kilo, at 220. And so you watch that guy and you see he's, he, he's a master of his craft. Yeah. And so, like, the, the weakness of Westside would be. They never look like a master of the movement. Mm -hmm. They look very strong and incredible, and that you know they have powers people don't have, but they don't look good at what they do. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. no, for that was sure. the one thing I didn't. Well, because there'd like. be a lot of ratcheted big squats, you yeah. know, and there there was some like I remember watching Sean Frankel total something crazy, yeah, and and He's, all his moves like, <laughs> and then Ramos looked like that from time to time, and some of the guys with the bench seemed like it was even a, it was a little bit smoother, but. Yeah, that was like probably one of the knocks. Guys were opening up super heavy. A lot of guys were bombing yes, out. Right. And, you know, every so often then it would hit something that's so astronomical. Yes. That would be crazy. But that's what drew me towards um, the Olympic lifting, like Bulgarian thing. I'm like, if I can get comfortable right. doing that, how am I not better? It, it's just imp it's impossible not because I'm, totally. I'm getting uncomfortable. I'm in the most uncomfortable spot. And every – if I remember like teaching clients and having young athletes – they're so comfortable to go to depth, uncomfortable to go to depth. But when that's not scary anymore, when you're good at that movement, yeah, 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 yeah. then it's like it's not scary because it's what you do. It's just yep. like I squat. So John Bros is just like walking to the store. Yeah, he's like, why? Well, I walked to the store yesterday. Why can't I? Why can't I walk tomorrow? Like in the next day, just like squat. Like he said it like that. I was like, it's kind of fucking true. Dad, like yeah, yeah. Dad, we, we put these arbitrary numbers on things. Like I need seventy two hours. I'm like. Says who? Like why? Yeah. We know based on what science. And so, John, <laughs> several people have proven it. Not just yeah. him, but you know the Bulgarians. Yes, yeah. they were on drugs, but there's plenty of people in America who yeah. train like Bulgarian-ish, and they're fine. It's just like you do the volume, 
that you as a human can do. I started doing these methods at 37 years old. Like a lot of people like, you know what I mean? Like 35, 37, like that's, and I hit my best numbers in my entire career during that. Like I wasn't cleaning 300 fucking pounds till I started doing it. Like I never did any of that stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like, and then then going to fucking power lift, you know, fucking 575 and like on deadlift, like none of that shit was happening for me Mm -hmm. until I started doing that methodology. And then I was at, yeah. And then I was adding 400, 800 meter lunges after. And I did that shit for like, fucking you years and lunch, years lunch, every, yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i'm on so i got a new streak right now is a 200 today was day 276 um, and uh of 800 mostly but i've done 400 about 12 of those days between competitions and maybe having something kind of banged up right. or whatever but yeah most of them have been 27 minutes or 800 meters what does laps. your heart rate get to when you're doing that never tracked it I'm curious. Like, well, so yeah. here's what I always say. And this Depends. is how, <laughs> yeah. And this is how I've almost explained all of my training, the instinctiveness, right. right. Is like, it's some weird area of in between like steady state cardio and, but the calorie burn that I felt when I used to do sprint work. Right. So I got, the, I get the same metabolic rate or not the same metabolic like lift. If I was doing sprint work is what it feels like. Right. But then it's similar heart rate wise to a steady state cardio. But then I'm getting lactic acid threshold sure pushed to another increased. level. My yeah. connective tissues increase to another level. My like GPPs increase. So it's like everything's talking what I'm using all the time. So when that all kind of made sense to me yeah. and then I was like, all right, well, I'll just do an actual bodybuilding show by using this as my condition, my cardio. And, but then I flipped around and my lifts weren't going down as I went to one of these photo shoots. I remember, you know, back in the MP days, I would go to one of the photo shoots and I could barely like squat 225. I look amazing, but I was like ready to break. Yeah. And then once I figured this out, the last couple shoots I did right before I left, I remember squatting 405 in the fucking magazine shoot in my lifters. And I was like, oh, I feel like different. I think that (laughs) a lot of people are doing, but I mean, I, I know in college I started getting ready for bodybuilding and then my strength dips so much I so much i'm like no i can't do this yep you know like it was just like one day like you know like like 315 was heavy on bench and i'm like no yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> fuck I, this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that was the last day i'm like i can't do it and so, right. but, I, you know i think there's a lot a lot of people who've proven now yeah that you can you know what's the big power lifter who's also a bodybuilder he's a great dude um he is jacked. He's smart. He's super smart. Oh, Efferdine, Stan Efferdine. Oh, Stan yeah. Efferdine, yep. Like, I doubt he's ever weak, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. he uh, showcased that you could do it at an IFBB level plus right. do big numbers because he was training with Mark Bell and those guys and squatting like 800. I mean, he's it was like insane. I'll be here in October, by the way. The Swiss Symposium. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's downtown. I'm talking. That's yeah, a, have I you know. ever done that before? No. Dude, never. that's huge, Travis. Congrats. I'm excited. Thank you. you yeah, know, um, that's that's a big nod. So, like, the Swiss conference, Dr. Serrano's talked at it for fucking forever. Ever. But it's never been in America. Right. And so, so I've never went to it. I need, I need to make sure and go to it. I'm, I'm, I've watched videos mm-hmm. and, and participated, you know, uh, I bought their stuff on, yeah. online. Because, you know, they, they'll, Ed will be there. I'm talking with Brian Mann, who is, like, He's like my mentor with Velocity. Yeah. He's written, he's done all the research, this guy. That's awesome. So if you Google Velocity-based training, he's going to come up. But Got it. So we're speaking together because, you know, he's the research. You know, I'm actually using it. And I'm doing, you know, like I'm, my thesis was Velocity. And so, like, and he's. Oh, your thesis in school? Yeah. That's and he, dope. he was on my board. So it's going to be really cool to talk with him. You know? Well, and just like the, that's like the biggest, uh, really esteemed conference that I'm aware of. I don't really yeah. pay attention to a lot of that stuff, but it's pretty sweet. I wanted to get the, you know, to get the, the, get the nod. nod. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to get it and uh, come here. It's in October. Yep. It's October. Yeah, I need Elite to... is a part of it. Yeah. It's yeah, at yeah. Elite maybe, hmm. but I don't know for sure. That's cool. Um, anyway, so it's going to be fun. So That's October real. 28th. Hell yeah. Around around that'd be. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. I definitely need to go yeah. listen to some speakers. Danny, we'll go back through one more time. What <clears> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going back to the weightlifting world, just like throughout the years, uh, either what's one of your favorite lifts or like, what is one of the like most favorite lifts you've witnessed live? Okay. Mm. Um, great question, Danny, and your arms are looking small. Go ahead. They are kind of, I'm going to have to go with th- this too. You know, there's, um, Ryan uh, Grimsland at the mm. Arnold this past year. It was like his coming of age is like he, um, had bumped up to the 73 ki- kilo kilo class. Cause mm. we had to. They in the Olympics, they announced that 67 kilos is 
would not be a class. So we bumped. That was changing shit changed, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and we so we were going head to head with the top, and um, I thought he was ready, and like I put, I bet one of the other coaches I was like he's in a total of 320 kilos. So I was I was predicting he was about to hit this huge total, and uh, no no one thought he could have gone up 30 kilos, and then. So at the Arnold was by far. He hit the 180 and like it. All of a sudden, he, so he goes six for six. Hell totals yeah. 320. Yeah. Destroys everyone. <laughs> and then out because he's really quiet. Out of the blue, when he when he got the down signal, it was a 400 pound clean and jerk, 182. He slams it and then he goes to the front. It was on the it was on the main stage. Yeah. Too. And like pretends he's slitting his wrist and drinking his own blood. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's, that's some John fucking, North shit. Yeah, yeah that's fucking yeah. gangster. Yeah, except he's actually good. You know yeah, that? yeah. Yeah, I love John North, but yeah. he was never at the level of this kid. No, yeah, and yeah. So he, he just out of Damn. you know, we all that's wait a fatal for John way, North to bro. say something. Yeah. But this kid never does. And out of the blue. So you were completely like I had no idea. How fired up are you? Oh my um, god. <laughs> you probably about ripped your shirt like, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was like a proud a dad yeah. right there. Yeah, man. Think about this. When you coach a kid from when he's just a he's just a kid, he's a baby. Yeah. His mom brings him to you and he's like, uh, can you he was doing CrossFit and, he, and they, she was like, Can you make him stronger for <laughs> CrossFit? Yeah. And then now this kid is like the top weightlifter in America and he slits his wrist in front of them. <laughs> Ask me cool. Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and watching like so, Game of Thrones or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that that's pretty All fucking the main epic. <laughs> and like you have Coach Ken, um, who's the like, He's a nine-year um, NFL strength and conditioning coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's sitting here. Mike Gatone, who's like the head coach, mm -hmm. you know, like when we go say, to Tokyo, Mike Gatone will be the coach for everyone. Yeah. And so he's sitting there, and you hear everyone and just – Did a place, so, place go crazy? It, it, yeah. It was like – Yeah. It was so chaos. Epic. Electric. Because he just became, you know, from this the young guy. kid to this man. It was yeah. just a separator. It was. And so and I knew at that moment – like we weren't just going to make the Olympics; mm -hmm. we were going to win. Fucking win the Olympics! Right. Exclamation point! And so this I just kid, got chills. Yeah. Not sure I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even look anymore at the American records. Yeah, why we would simply you? look at? I'm like, this kid is like, it's like he's. I feel like sometimes I'm like, did I know your mom when I was in college? Because like you're so much like me, you know. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> <this kid is, laughs> but like you know, anyway. So he's this kid is that was the one, and two there was um. A girl, Hunter Elam. Oh, and, yeah, I know yeah, Hunter, yeah. And she, you know, she... So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, all the guys are like, yeah, we know yeah, Hunter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, shout out. No free shout outs. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so she, um, you know, she moves out of the blue from Oklahoma. Comes, and, you know, her goal, we had all the time, people are like, oh, I want to make the world team, I want to team USA, and it happens all the time. And, you know, you tell them, well, okay, maybe, but here's what it takes, you know. And so she listened, and she did every little thing. And at the time, there was like there was I was there, and Don uh, McCauley was my assistant coach, and he was there. And like you know, I let athletes be coached whoever you know whoever fit them the most. So she was with Don for a while, and it wasn't working. And so she's like, you know, before I just quit, let me just try you. And then we just like started on fire. And so mm -hmm. we're at this meet. This is the maybe the craziest thing in weightlifting. We're at the meet. We're at uh, it was just like one of the American Open series. It's where it's a national meet, but it's not the big one, but mm -hmm. it was the final qualifier for the Worlds. And so um, our, we knew the number to hit. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, so she doesn't snatch very well. I think she only got one snatch. So now we're in the hole. Mm -hmm. So now to make the team, she's got to hit 121 kilos. So 266 pounds, clean and jerk. What's she weigh? So she, she's 138 pounds okay. at the time. <clears throat> so, um, so we say, look, it's like, there's no point in opening up with anything <laughs> other than the 121. <laughs> I fucking love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It gets better. So yeah. so we're warming up, and she looked terrible. She <laughs> missed her last three warm-ups. It wasn't like she was missing the jerk. Yeah. It was technical. She was getting spit out, like shit on by the ball. Damn. Shit and I'm buried. like, you know, um, so like at the, when she missed her final warm-up, she looked at me and put her arms up. I was like, we came here to make this team. And so she's like, all right. She's like, I trust you. I was like, you got this. And I said, you saved a lot of energy. Like, you know, <laughs> you, yeah, you, you missed go. all the lifts. Yeah. You didn't stand up. <laughs> You're pulling from the depths right here. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that's like, good. I was like, you didn't stand anything up. You didn't jerk anything. So you should feel good, you know. So um, so we're walking to the stage. And Spitzer Arnold, who's my buddy, he owns Power and Grace. And he's an amazing coach. You know, um, he's like, what do you think? I'm like, we're screwed. There's no chance. <laughs> but I was like, but we came for this moment. And 
somehow she goes out there and hits that wave. It was crazy. On the first attempt? On the very <laughs> first. You shut it down after that? Shut it down. Yeah. That's Dude, right. that's fucking it, awesome. <laughs> so I think that So was she the, went two for six. And made a world. <laughs> Damn. And, ma- and like, it lit the whole world of weightlifting has never been the same. Yeah. Because, you know, people uh, were saying he's, he's crazy. We told you he's lost his mind. Oh, you with know, her opening up at that. Yeah, you know, because I'm the power lifter. They yeah, of course. That I'm the power You're lifter. Yeah. I fucking love that. I care about yeah. lifting heavy. Yeah, yeah. And like, so everyone's like, oh, see, we told you he's crazy. She should get a different coach. Out of the booth. <laughs> Bam. I'm yeah. like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And there's the power lifter. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're all like, oh, you're so smart. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. yeah. so good. There's a big, in, in weightlifting, there's a huge problem. There's the culture, you know, in, in powerlifting. If I were to compete against, a, you know, another team, at that night, we would eat together and, and I would ask him questions and he would ask me questions. And I would learn from him and he would learn from me. In weightlifting, it's all they, I feel like the culture is this. All the coaches care about is that they that they want the whole world to think that they're the best coach mm. at all cost. So they will literally say whatever they can say to demean the other coach to make people not think that that coach is good. America's like, the team. Uh, That's what they got to be. Thinking. Damn right. Yeah. Like, I'm here to win. Yeah. So yeah. if you know something I don't, that's yeah. cool. I'll tell everyone you're better than me. But tell me what you know so yeah, I can help yeah, my yeah. Dude, you can yeah. feel it even when you're in the back room. Yes. Like, you can just feel uh, it on them. Like, it's so easy it's to tell. It's terrible. It's the reason it's so why. weird. Yeah. This will be my – I'll go to this Olympics, do my thing, and then I will – this will be it. And so the culture needs to change. So any mm-hmm. way to the coach, you guys need to get your shit together. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, about what winning. I like about those moments is the same thing I see with our guys. Like, Trey just had one of these, right? Trey does his first meet. Um, the, the I wrapped his knees, but not the right the way he likes him. Whatever the first time he misses the first first squat, come up the second time he didn't hit depth. He came up too early. So then I walk oh, back and I go, "All right, bro." Like I go, "I'm gonna wrap the absolute shit out of your knees. Yeah. Just fucking squat the bar. There's no. I'm not calling you. We're not doing like just go up. Just but squat. it's that moment yeah. where you as an athlete have to make a decision, right? Yeah. Am I willing to go to hospital on this meet to stay in? Yes. Am I going to do what it takes? Am I going to step up? The lights now are done. Like, it's just there. And, or, and the, my favorite part is the fucking lady on the mic always <laughs> wants to announce it. Trayvon needs us to stay in the meet. <laughs> <laughs> As if that's helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, thank you. Because I had the same thing happen at a sanction meet years ago. I, I, I kept going up in weight. And I'm sure you've done this before, too. And yeah. it's like. Of course, the same fucking kilo shit, 699.7. Yeah. I'm like, and it's like, this guy needs this to stay in the meat. I looked at the <laughs> biggest guy. I look at the biggest guy close and I go, I'm just going to drop in and try to come back up. So will you just stand back here? Because literally yeah. I was just trying to work off the suit because I was gassed. Yeah. And so it's like one of those things, but I, I like to see how people react in those moments because right. the gamers step the fuck up and you don't yeah. all, it's not, it's not 10 for 10 all the time. I've fucked this no. up too. Yeah. But the guys are eight for ten most of the time. I fuck with that. They're different. They're different. It's a, it, they're, that's the built different that they're talking about. Ryan is different, and Hunter is different. Yep. You know, I think Hunter, right now, maybe has lost that belief in herself, mm-hmm. but she's different. Yeah, I, of all it's there. The, yes, yes. She's not is even. Is that something you can anymore. teach? You think? Man, I don't know. Uh, you can like, yeah. <laughs> it, but like, you can't make a lamb a lion. Okay. I can make a line, a tougher line, hmm. but I can't make a lamb a line. Yeah. So like, you it's like, have it's like, do you go towards that fire or do you run away from it? And so like, sure. I, I feel like I can see a lot about a lifter once I put him under a real weight yes. and see how he fucking, you know, I'd rather yeah. a motherfucker take it fearless and miss it. And I got to pull it off of him right. every day. The there you scared. go. It's a huge, one thing I've learned in my studies, it was like, the, you know, I, I took a sports psychology, which I was rolling my eyes. I think, you know, I, I went into that thinking, you know, they get, you know, psychology is such a bullcrap, you know, field. Yeah. Yeah. There's no real science, and I was wrong. And so, like, one of the things I learned the most was this, is that everybody feels certain things. When you're going to the, you know, you go to the Olympics, no human on earth doesn't get anxiety. No of one's course. not a little scared. It's the anticipation of that feeling that makes some people, like Ryan, a killer, and some people fold. It's like they, yeah. some people feels it and they're like, I'm scared. I'm, I'm enamored God. by that. 
Yeah. Me because, too. Because I've, I, and I don't know if I tricked myself, but I just told myself I was a fucking gamer. Right. I'm built. This is what I was born to do. Right. Put me in the fucking, like, I want yes. the fucking ball. Yes. My jumper's a little broken, but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> totally. but it's like, not wet. But yeah, it's not, I dump, the jumper's not wet. So it's like, but when I, when I walk up to that moment to get that squat, cause we shot a documentary too, which yeah. I didn't, we haven't put it together yet, but around this whole thing of the do, the two sports, right. you know, doing the body, don't show the power. And I was like, I this is the, I have to make this weight. This is what I've been building up to. But I just remember thinking, and this is the other thing I started coming up with. I tell myself, I'm like, if I can unrack it, I can fucking squat it. Right. I really believe that. And I think once you start getting scared or you're done, you're done. 100%. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Special. Now. Yeah. Some kids will never even get past that. Yeah. They never get they, They're scared forever. And then some of the best don't be scared forever. Coach, yeah. you know, are like, they just get nervous and they can't get past it. And I even tell them, like, you know, I was like, you are really good. You need to focus on, you know, counseling, sports psychology. How do yeah. you, you need to learn how to, you know, take this anxiety and, like, turn it into your favor. Like, yeah. Ryan feels that like a superpower. Hell Same yeah. Me. That's how, that's like, how I, I am, too. I feel too. like I can do anything because of this. Some people feel it like I'm scared. They feel like they're scared. I don't know. I, I, I'm looking for I, that moment to test myself. Yes. Like, cause you don't get those a lot as an older athlete right. much. Right? right. So it's like, I'm, I'm excited for that spot because I want to see how I fucking do. Right. I'm like, I'm like, I need it. That's like the, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever encountered like with any of your athletes? Like they, they get to that certain number where, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they just can't get past it. And it normally breaks them. Yeah. A certain, fo a certain few find a way mm -hmm. to get through it. And certain people, that's the breaking. And it comes. In weightlifting, yeah. everybody loves it for two years. It's like, oh, it's so cool. I can yeah. do a snatch. And, you know, because it is it is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. you know, you're lifting very heavy weights so quickly. Your body's moving through space. Like, you know, yeah, it's awesome. It looks like you're a gymnast, yeah. but you're super strong. It's so cool. Yeah. And so, but then that to your mark happens. And you actually got to work. And you actually, there's not a PR every week. Mm -hmm. And you got to find a way. That's, and, but you know, the people that quit, I mean, I'm, some of them, if they if they do listen, I mean, you need to figure out what I'm about to tell you. The people who stop right there, that's going to be the pattern. You know, they're yeah. going to business. <clears throat> in life, oh, it's yeah. fun. You hit business, and like all of a sudden, you have competition. How do you react? Mm -hmm. It's life, man. You know, like it's life. You know, you're going to meet a girl in college, and there's going to be you, and there's going to be another dude. What are you going to do? You know, like <laughs> you know, you're going to back down. You know, for you're like, oh, I can't beat this dude. Come on, like mm -hmm. it'll be a pattern. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and what? like my pattern is win. I'm I'm winning. So. My pattern is win. Yeah. <laughs> I, it. Yeah. I love so, it. Go I mean, cool. Well, first I want to get back to like the moment of anticipation. Yeah. I found I that, that. I, I don't know what it was. It might have been football in high school, but before every game in in powerlifting now that sense of anticipation like you're nervous yes. but it's for no fucking reason because you know exactly what's going on <laughs> my way of coping with that is just to go fucking ultra crazy before it happens right. like on football like as soon as you hit the first person it's fine it's out the that's window. true that's right so what i used to do is just look at someone just fucking start headbutting them. i attack it with fucking pain and crazy and yeah so what I, do you do in powerlifting cole Yell or dump, or dump yeah. the bar in the back yeah, room, yeah, you know, start yeah. some shit like hey, that. Hey, tell them your story about the first time you did a multi ply yeah, meet. Yeah, so first this time, is awesome. first time I did a multi ply meet, I had I had trained in single ply a few yeah. times, and I spontaneously signed up for this meet. And Corey's just like, "Hey, you've been spawning in single ply. Why don't you just fucking do multi ply and see what happens?" <laughs> hey, just come to the house. I got so, one little bit. Yeah. So so literally <laughs> the day before, I go to Corey's house just to see if like the suit will fit. So I I try it on. Never fucking take a weight. Never do anything in it. Go to the meet. We're in the warm up. It sounds room. like a bad idea. So. <laughs> yeah. So I go to the meet. I go to the meet. I'm in the warm up room, and you know I work. I work up. Do all the normal things, and I take 405. And 405 is a super fucking light, like lightweight yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing to be worried about. No wraps. Nothing. No fucking belt. Whatever. Fucking drop. Like go down. I can't get back up. I had to fucking dump the weight. There's a bunch of like strength coaches are like, oh my God, you're going to fucking get somewhere hurt. Get like, what the a fuck? A bunch of other multi guys like, like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So it basically <laughs> looked like a fucking buffoon in the back room. I know. Yeah. And then I've seen this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Then and I hit, I think I ended up like squatting like, squatting like 630. It, <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was like, it was like 635 or something like that. Super good rep. And those guys were like, nice, nice. I'm like, yeah, man. I, it was, was just a, a great kid. fucking time. There was a young boy. He was like 18. But he was like one of these young phenoms, and so like he's at the WPL with us. So right away, I mean, I'm, I'm the the dude. I'm looking at my like, who's this young kid, you yeah. know? And then he goes to like a, it was like five something. He's gonna take it raw, 
and he asked me to spot him. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'll spot you. And then he dumped it on me. Oh! And I'm like, yeah, the poor kid. Yeah, yeah. Like, I lit into him. Yeah, of course. I'm like, we are professionals here. You know, like, this poor kid. Anyway, he puts his suit on. So he misses like 505 raw terribly. Puts his suit on, goes out and does 800. Like, hey, <laughs> it's your boy. And I'm like, I was like, I give you credit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Don't miss nothing. Don't ever fucking yeah, do don't that. Don't fucking kill me. Yeah, yeah. Like, be a professional. Yeah. I was like, hey, don't ask me to spite ever again, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would have not, not said yes to that <laughs> one. Try to say. I tried to be the nice one, you know? There was Chuck. Yeah. I was afraid of. And so I was, I was trying to be the nice one. That You're was, the nice the guy. Last, I was the last time. I'm like, check that box. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, hey, Mr. Mass, will you spot me? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, man. Yeah, you're 18 year old boy. Yeah, but then he dumps it on me. I'm like, uh, sorry. That's like it gets the rules. That like, poor kid. I can't imagine how he felt. Now I think about it. I don't remember his name. And so, uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I understand. A, yeah. I don't. I've watched that. <laughs> yeah. But, but, wait, was but, somebody but, spotting was, you? <laughs> Uh no, it was okay. n- no one was spotting me. That's like good. no one That's bad. somehow yeah, yeah, yeah. someone had a, was like recording a Snapchat just randomly and they fucking caught on video, That's which right, is hilarious. Said it to me. <laughs> yeah, this but, world, this world. but I think there's something to be said about just it was literally do I fucking got it in me? Can I pull this off? Just going out yeah. there into the world of unknown, be like fuck it, whatever happens happens. <laughs> I, I, I think there's some part, greatness yeah. to be said. Well, you know why? Because there's no expectation, right. exactly. And yeah. I think yeah. when you lift without expectation, sometimes you do better. Meets, like yes, I went to meet someone. Was like, oh, I just decided to do it two days ago. I had to make weight and go, and then that's the best way. Yeah, you He's just like, fucking rock, bro. Like, just go have fun. Let's uh, yeah, where yeah. people mess it's supposed up, to be, it's supposed yeah, to be fun. It's supposed still. to be fun. Where they mess up is they look at the meat as something that's not. Yep. it's like it's not life altering. Uh, it could be a world. It could be the Olympics. And at the end of the day, it's still weight lifting. It's still everything you do every single day. Yeah, nothing is different. It's just a different venue. Mm-hmm. It's the same people. Like you know, like. You know, when you know, assuming we make the Olympics, when he goes there, it'll be the exact same people that we've competed against for the last four years. Nothing's different. Nothing is different. It only is drilling that in, drilling that in his head starting now is really important. He's a different bird, though, man. We'll be at the world at the junior. We're in Greece at Junior Worlds, and he's like yawning. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, he's like, yeah. (laughs) Like there was like, he was the calmest chilling dude. And then in the back, he I don't know. This kid is different. He like he hits his last um, warm up on snatch and he slams it, and he's like, "Let's go to work, boys." He said it no to way. everybody, to all these kids. I'm like, "I love you, man." Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Like, he was just like, <laughs> that confidence is yeah. really starting. Oh, out. dude, he's so when confident. you're really that elite and that strong, and you just know it. Yes, if you do like, the that's things, just a different. That's another thing, Corey. Is yeah, like, if you do the things necessary, yeah, to be at your very best, you know. Only time I see people get really nervous is when they did not do the things and yeah. they know it and they get there. Um, one of my athletes who's been with me forever, who's like my, Matt Weiniger, who is, he's going to be Team USA very soon. He's amazing. And so he went to a meet two years ago and he, and like he bombed. And here's why, because maybe two or three weeks prior to that, he goes to Vegas on a bachelor party. Hmm. And he's like, and he's, he's like, do you mind? I'm like, yes, I mind. Cause like, we have the nationals in three weeks. I'm like, are you trying to do this, you know, to sabotage yourself? I said, but go ahead and go. Go see what happens. So he's at the meet. He's pale because he's nervous. He knows he's not prepared. Yeah. So he bombs. I'm like, when you want to call me, come to my room and let's talk about this. And, like, so he did. And, like, from that moment on, he's, like, killing it. Like, he's never nervous at the meet. He doesn't do those dumb things. And, like, he's finally, you know, he's been the kid I knew was amazing since he was 10 years old, but he just did not do the things he needed. Mm-hmm. He was like shitting on himself. And mm-hmm. so now he's finally embraced it. So he'll be my next Hell incredible. Yeah. If I can just make my, I don't know that I'll stay in another Olympics, but uh, he will, he will be the next dude. So sick. Trevon. Um, I don't have like another question or anything, but like to go off of like the anxiety, like, yeah. like that. I mean, that's how like, I felt from like my me, like I didn't, like I didn't even like train for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally just basically like signed up for a powerlifting meet. And like, have fun. Yeah. And like, yeah. missed elite by what? 20 pounds or something yeah, like, like almost, that. Yeah. Almost went elite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. He I squatted. did a strong man once. Same way. Yeah. Somebody's like, do you want to do this? Strong? It was in Colorado. I was like, do you want to do a strong man meet? I'm like, yeah. And I and I won, and so it was it was insane. Of course, and I'm like I'm like I almost did started the down the path of the world's strongest man. Yeah, but then it was like the same time where I was like started falling apart. 
I was like, it was the end, you know. It was yeah. Like boom, 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 boom. All the you know, elbow, shoulder, hip. But it was definitely on my radar. But then my so body Trey's was first like, meet, he goes four fifty four squat, four eighty deadlift at one forty eight. You know, and then would you bench two and a quarter? Yeah, like two twenty. So, so yeah, so he totals twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. What was your total? Eleven. It was like eleven eighty. Sixty. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, he's so so yeah. explosive. Wow. Uh, twenty twenty yeah. twenty two. Yeah. So I ran he track. was recruited yeah. at Akron. Yeah, I ran track in college. I, I figured. Yeah. Yeah. I work with the Jamaican sprinters. Okay. And like, I love. It's my. Favorite. Those guys are beasts. It's, yeah, we're about to go again, but yes. I've, they're different. They do a lot of conjugate stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, man. You would think. So I went there assuming I was going to find out, like, ancient secrets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're the best. Yeah. They're just amazing is all they are. It's like yeah. their programming is, like, very old. There's not mm. a lot of science. It's coming, though. Yeah. You know, they're, they're – but, like, um, Johan Blake is, like, their top yeah, guy yeah, now. Yeah. That's who we work with the most. And, like – Because he was on the relay team with Usain, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he, was, yeah. He, he is the second fastest – um, no one knows this. But he's the second fastest sprinter of all time. Yeah, got he's it. got the second. You know, it was like he, you say, you saying did what was it? He did um, nine point five nine, I think. I think uh, Johan is maybe nine point six nine, like point one. Wow. Yeah, you know, don't. It's somewhere in that, in that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, there, mate, Johan. When I watching him, it, everybody needs to see this and like see how it's just different. It's like he moves. It's like. If he were a cheetah, it's your ass. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's his gonna power, track his you. power output is crazy. Yes, man. you know, Anders raced him. Yeah, but Anders was given like a twenty or twenty-five. Anders meters. partner. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, amazing. Gave Anders a twenty-five meter head start. It looked like a cheetah <laughs> tracking down a poor little, uh, uh, not only a deer but uh, a deer with a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, Shout out Anders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just looked like he pawed the ground mm. and like. Teleported through space. It was insane. Yeah. To this date, I'm athletically, I've never seen anything like <laughs> That's yeah. that. Yeah. Everybody go to Jamaica and watch those dudes. I want to wrap it up with this, Travis, and have you speak on this. There's a lot of younger trainers and people in the profession that pay attention to the podcast and just kind of the stuff I got going on. You've produced content off and on consistently for a long time, but you're also, how old are you? I'm 49. Okay, so but you're in the same from the same era, but even a few uh, a few years older, and originally from powerlifting, which usually those guys are against content, right? Right. Because they don't want to be sold out or whatever the fuck dumb that is. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, Louis, <laughs> yeah, I don't ever understand that. But why, why Louis was, was the this, yeah, Louis, who was the one of, is the one of the greatest content producers of all time. Why help? So it's, why help people? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would I want to pass on everything I've done? My or whole do life this there. for a living if I just right. do content? So my my I guess my question and just statement is like. What's your advice for guys that, you know, are ha kind of struggling with that or also like maybe you're overthinking doing content because of what their buddy's going to think. It, it's a huge fucking yeah. problem, but we've made a good living because we ain't scared to do it. Right. But the part of that's confidence too. Right. But it's like, I think a lot more people could have this as their profession. Cause how many guys do you know that are great that could easily do this as a profession, but will never be able to because of this piece. And they're so afraid, you know, because it is right now. Like, you know, even me, I'm like, I'm very careful of what I say is an absolute. So yeah. that would be the things you got to do is like, it's the way you say things. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't be careful of saying something is 100% because it could very well not be anymore. You yeah. Know, we don't, know, but you could say, you could easily put out content saying, this is what I do, here's the results I've gotten. My, all my athletes have noticed this. That's data. And yeah. So, like, you know, I would just say in the way you present yourself. Be and then no one can More say More about that. the delivery. Yeah, it's all about delivery. You know, don't use absolutes. Just say this is what's worked. We've done this thing, and this is what's happened. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's happened for 20 people. Well, that's a pretty good, you know, uh, yeah. sample size. And, like, you know, they went from doing this to this. Well, that's a really good effect size. Mm -hmm. So just be careful on what you say. But then, you know, as long as you – you know, present yourself of who you are and here's what I have. I think mean, you're fine. You put it out a lot and like, don't overthink it. You know, like, you know, when I put out something like a study or like a, you know, somewhere I've like looked at a lot of research, you know, then you gotta be super careful. Cause yeah. people there, the scientists out there are like, that's the interesting group of humans. Yeah. They want you to mess up so bad. So they can, <laughs> Murder you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even fuck with those I, guys. Squat University, that poor guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like people, He's built a good following, yeah. but he gets hammered all the time, too. Hammered. But, yeah. you know, 
you know, still got over a million followers, so he doesn't care. You know, yeah, his exactly. bank account is better than the people talking shit about him. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, you know, that you just got to get ready for that. So if you do become really big, know that's coming and just ignore it. You know, I think there should be a point where all of us should probably, once you get to a certain level, you put the content out, but you don't do the social media. I think uh, because we're human. I, I mean, yeah. why would I care what some random person says, but I do. You know, it makes me super mad. You know, um, they'll say Ryan's on drugs. I'm like, yeah. man, damn. Yeah. How? You know, yeah. you know anything about USADA? Because yeah. like, they're there all the time. You can go read how many times he's been tested. And then, I'll, you know, I always ask him, like, what is your, you know, what is your theory on how I'm doing that? Yeah. You think I'm <laughs> how are we scooting by this? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not a billionaire. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to pay for a chemist and I don't have the money to buy USADA off. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, I'm not doing that. And so, like, I even say, come stay with us for a month. No one ever takes me up on that. But like, you know, but like, so just get ready for that. I think I'm coming to the point where I, I want to do the content. I just don't want to read the stuff, you know, like, because I'm yeah. human and it still bothers me. Yeah. For some reason. I've had some really good ones lately, especially because now I'm on TikTok and there's a <laughs> lot of really young, weak kids on there that have never seen Conjugate. Talking shit. Oh yeah. my gosh. And yeah. then. I have like a, some 17 year old kid that can't even deadlift 300 pounds. That's like Talking telling me, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so I was like, it's been a while since I've had like this much coming at me. I'm like, this is good for me, but yeah. also you are human, yeah. even though I, you know, I mean, it just is what it is, but that's one thing I think that people have a hard time, but I'm not going to let that limit me building totally. the next group of people that can follow this program. You totally. know what I mean? There's several ways to look at it. Like, um, yesterday, just yesterday, I'm looking, um, there was squat. Oh, it's funny. So squat university was getting uh, hated on by uh, noble physio, which we're friends now. So what I did is he made a post about squat university and I was like, I'm curious, why do you guys spend so much time talking about this guy? You know? yeah. And I gave my, I was like, he, d these are the things I know that he does. And you know, in the argument they would put like, you know, there's a two, two ways of looking at the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. Should you flex? Should you not? Same with the thoracic. Yeah. And there's a lot of theories and it's research supporting both sides, but none of it's. There's always research yeah. supporting yeah. both there's sides. Not, it's not conclusive. <laughs> yeah. and that's my point. Yeah. So like, um, you know, but then it got narrowed down and the guy was really cool. He's like, you know, you make valid points. And uh, he's like, the thing that he's really wrong would be shoulders. You know, there's something which I don't, I didn't even know that argument. And I'm like, which email him <laughs> you know like maybe yeah. instead of like hammering this guy who like does all this free stuff for people yeah you know and so we became friends so this dude's gonna be on my podcast but <laughs> there was some other dude who was like um here's the way it started the dude was talking about um the belt so like the belt you know adds there's no he said that there was no research that would say that a belt will actually help and i'm like I was like, and so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hold on a yeah. second. So, so he even went on to say, well, there's have you ever squatted before, sir? <laughs> so yeah. he went on to say, like, um, there's research that says it increases velocity and there's research that says it you know, activates more muscle. I'm like, uh, didn't you just answer your, but, yeah. but <laughs> and still, yeah, I stayed out of it. But then someone tagged me and he said, well, you know, coach Mass does a lot with velocity. Maybe he could chime in. And so then I got in and said, well, I was like, it definitely in my sport, you know, when you talk about, I'm a, it's a power driven, even though power lifting is not really power. I mean, weightlifting mm. is power because it's force times velocity yep. is power. And so like, you know, I have to get height on the bar. Squatting, you don't have to squat fast. You know, yep. I could squat at 0.1 meters per second or I could squat at 0.5. You just have to squat I, it. I did the same thing. Um, I said, I said, but in my sport, 100%, you know, velocity you know, times that force is going to give me height on the barbell to get under. So it's just like, and he's like, and then he was like, cool. He's like, do you have research? So I, you know, I crushed it for him, gave him tons of research. <laughs> and like, and then uh, I even said, but if you just look at, you know, Newton's second law, you know, which is, it's really the force equals mass times acceleration. But from that equation comes everything, velocity, power, you know, and the, the dude said, because I said, if you look at Newton's second law and I quoted some things, He's like, well, Newton's second law is force times mass acceleration, which I don't even said in that. I was like, bro, I know. He said, so I think you're getting confused with velocity. I'm like, do you know what acceleration is? Acceleration <laughs> is, is the end velocity minus the original velocity divided by how long it took me to get there. You know, so like, <laughs> bro, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, did I just waste half my life and like dealing with this guy? <laughs> but, 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 but the dude at the end said, you're right. He said, I guess it was just the wording. Mm. I'm like, you need to. 
read the whole thing. I was very clear and all of that. <laughs> I was like, you know? So in that instance though, the moral of the story, it actually was good mm. because everybody, it was in the way I approached it, even though I wanted to strangle the dude, I was like, <laughs> you know, my wife was like, breathe. And then, and so then <laughs> I was like, you know, cause he was like, he, was, he said something like, I don't mean to be the, you know, the uh, physics police. I'm like, uh. I'm like I am, you can talk shit to me about a lot of things, but physics and biomechanics is probably not going to work out for you. Yeah, yeah. You, know? so like, like you basically went like this. Oh. Nah. <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I was so, I, was like, I can't believe this guy, just, you know, anyway. And then he's like. You know, you can read Lane Norton stuff. I'm, I'm, and I was like, son, Lane Norton is my friend. Yeah. He would defer to me on this topic. You know, like nutrition, I would defer to it. Like, but I didn't say any of this I'm saying right now. I was nice to him. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, look, I was pretty clear. And I even went on to say, you know, with the belt, more of a finish on that, is that even physiologically, you know, like things are happening. When I put the belt on, if velocity is increased, we know then the motor unit recruit recruitment is increased and the rate of that recruitment is increased and then elasticity the things i taught you know time i said earlier and you got the stretch reflex muscle spindles golgi tendon organ all those processes are improved with a focus on velocity that's nothing new you know we've compensatory acceleration louis talked about that forever yep. you know was it uh, fred outfield was the one who like really brought that term and i was like you know this is not new this is it's so like so so i did in and then everyone was really cool though so yesterday gave me hope for humans is like we can talk <laughs> we can disagree at first and discuss things and come to <clears throat> different conclusions but that was really i would have cool. got to the drink the blood part yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to uh, <laughs> i was just thinking like we need like t-shirts that says like drink your own blood yeah. <laughs> like honestly Dude, that's, I'm, I'm even a bigger fan of ryan now after hearing that yeah. that is me fucking, too that's yeah. like the Odin celebration yeah. it's, we need to like, clip that video in yeah. oh yeah. it's so good he is just uh, a kid but anyway so that was i hope that we can all agree instead of like using the absolute and then somebody yelling at you, like, can't we just discuss things and well, learn? And I think that's maybe where I have an issue is when people come at me, I'm like, yo, like, I, first off, I'm just, I got my own, like, lab in here, right? right. We just do what we do. For the last and, 30 years. But yeah, man. forever, yeah. bro. I've been doing this since 99. So, so it's yeah. like, you know, I don't know. It's just really, it's like, I'm not hurting anything you're doing. Like, why are you coming at me? That's what I said, too. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I got to send you what I sent them. I was like, you know, maybe if you just spent all your time, if you think he's wrong, Putting out content that's you know yeah, contrary to your that, fucking, then yeah. maybe you'll change. But like, yeah. Because but but I, and I was I was like, but if someone that follows him reads this, mm. they're going to turn you off because of your you're showing so much hate. They're yeah. Going, they're not going to listen to you because the natural instinct is like yeah, if there's something you believe in and someone attacks it, instantly you're going to attack back. And so, yeah. But if someone questions, you said maybe what about this and like. Yeah. And the, that language would get a lot more done. And so yeah. it was really cool to talk to these people and they actually say, yeah. I know we're going long, but I got one more question because yeah. I think you can explain it. When Lou used to talk about the Golgi tendon and the bands, why, why is that? And that's because I get a lot of questions like, why don't you just put more weight on the bar? And I'm like, well, because it overloads the nervous system and it's got the uh, eccentric. Thanks for asking. But this. like, I yeah. think if we have like, because we'll be able to clip this yeah. and say on the website, yes. this is why your body likes the bands because right. of when you do a squat, when you do anything, when you stretch the muscle, there's a couple things that happens. It's like, if you think about uh, there's muscle spindles that run along parallel to your muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. And so when those stretch, you know, and they're automatically, they're connected directly to your uh, spinal cord. So they don't have to go to the brain and back. They go to the spinal cord. Okay. And back. So they cause passive contraction. They cause you to contract, you know, that, stretch reflex the bounce at the bottom yeah the golgi tendon organ is is in the tendon and what happens when it feels that pressure you know like that grinding where you're slowing down yeah they they will inhibit the muscle and turn it off and like cause you to like you can't do it because it's it's worried that you're going to tear the muscle okay. or tear the tendon and so there's two different things so it causes it inhibits the muscles okay the muscle spindles in, increases you know it it helps to contract so they're, they're both important in the stretch reflex. So now, when your point with bands is like, because I'm going, f you know, when it pulls you faster, when you have a day, yeah. you know, it won't be, now there's definitely merit to the pausing, yeah. but when you have your day where you're just going as fast as you can. Okay. So I, this is where velocity really comes in. And like, 
is that if I go as fast as I can under control, yeah. what happens is that Goldie tendon organ gets used to that and it, it's inhibited and it starts saying, okay, we're fine. Mm. We're not over time. So in the faster you go, the more efficient the joint, you know, you're, muscle you're spindles. And, yes, you're, you're saying you're teaching the Goldie tendon organ to chill out, don't mm-hmm. turn me off. And you're teaching the uh, muscle spindles to contract even faster. And those are passive contractions. Those are things happening with you. It's not you. Mm. Your body is lifting it for you. It's creating that much force at that rate too. And so the faster I'm pulled down, the faster it'll turn around. And so like there's a merit for sp- yeah. days of like, and it doesn't necessarily, it's not so much about how f- f- it, that it's a certain speed. It's that you're going as fast as you can. And so like that's the compensatory acceleration, meaning when I'm in the bottom, I'm going to push as hard as I can to the tip top and bands allow you to accelerate to the top without the weight coming off of you. Yep. So there's like, you know, that's like three different things that bands help mm-hmm. with that neuromuscular, you know, um, reaction of the stretch. Reflex. Yeah. Yeah. So and then when you take that shit off, you feel like astronomically fast. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Cause we're, we, cause what we found out too, Travis <sighs> is that if we load up on like our back squat day, if I know I'm going to squat 700 in the meet, right. I've got to take, 800 to 830 850 in total tension totally so it's like then i'm you know when i unrack that weight it doesn't yes. even feel uh, like that heavy right because my nervous system has already felt that, it though. it's like yes as an athlete i know exactly what you're talking yeah. about yeah a researcher doesn't even comprehend that you know like, yeah it feels like but i know my unrack mean, is 830 like, it's yeah. like you know then when i go to the meet especially bloat then you have super compensation yes i've had more rest I'm bloated. Correct. I've got it. I've got the hype of the adrenaline. Like the, all I, of that works I know what together. 800 feels like exactly feels like a joke. I get it. Yeah. That's, you know, potentiation is like you're teaching your body. You know, you are even when you're doing say the bands and it's super yep. heavy. Now you're getting and that's all part of what I told you too. The stretch reflex. So the body is already giving feedback. You yeah. know, you get the afferent, efferent. You know, the some some things are going um, the at the joints. They're picking up certain things and giving it back to your brain mm-hmm. saying what to do about it. So like when it's used to 800, it doesn't send this emergency signal of like, oh shit, we're in trouble. Got it's it. like, oh, 700 is nothing, you know? So like all of it is so neuromuscular. It, I mean, Andy Galvin, it, yes, it's definitely muscular and it's definitely cellular, but it has a lot to do with that neuromuscular junction. It also makes you a fucking dog. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool too. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know like bands and chains just look cool. Right? Yeah. It doesn't look not cool. I don't know. Yeah. To, I don't know. I don't yeah. know how to measure that, but like, yeah. I know that. I it's know like, <laughs> Ryan's measuring it for us now. That's yeah. my fucking one of my favorite things I've heard in a right. long time. Yeah. Right. So good. Well, so. Travis, I gotta tell you, it was really fun having you here, man. Uh, we was we yeah, it was it was fun chopping it up just about all these different things. Um I'm your boy Corey G, small arms Danny at Trace Speed and the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak, that is Travis Mash, and we are out.